Hello. Trying to get all my stuff together. I'm here alone. God bless you, Maria. Let's see who's on tonight. Turn things around. I see you, Anya. Y'all sending some love to me. Kareem, Ebony, Minister Rose. Yes, hola to you as well. Mike Tate, good to see you. Forgiven 68, I like that. Who is that? Ah, Tarina, very good. Nice to see you, baby. Nice to see you. Joy, Michael Tate, Diane Mathis. Um, du Is it Du Bois? I want to say it right. It looks like Allie, Cynthia Baisden, Elder Terrell Ross. Good evening. God bless you. How exciting it is. Sister Gilda Cusada, I love that last name. Checking in with you as well, Michael Tate. Pastor Stacy, God bless you. Tasha Robinson. I see Mishi, Keisha Brown. Hi, Sister Gilda. A few years ago, about this time, we were in FPU together. Tamara, so excited about this. Carolyn Denise Branch Booker, so am I. Good evening. Cynthia Bazden, Evangelist Fabian, we love you. Latanya, Latoya Jenkins, and I miss you too. And don't you miss tonight, Prophet Jennifer Trish Morris. I'm missing some of y'all on this side. I see a lot of the people I usually follow on um, Periscope are coming on live. So I'm probably going to be challenged tonight. Sister Maria, if I didn't say you already, Katrina, Tony, love. Michelle Wallen, bless you. How are you? Good to see us on tonight. Pastor D, awesome. Terry Clark, hallelujah. Have y'all been praying? Amber Keys, welcome. God bless you. It looks like um, Periscope kind of topped off for a moment. I know people said that it was freezing a lot, so they were going to try to go on Facebook Live. Sister Taisha. Hello, hello, Andrea Allen, glad to see you on. Jernita K, awesome, exciting. Come on, be excited, people. Spread it my way. I can use it. Paulette Jamison. I just want to see because Periscope, I can't really tell who you are. Uh, Pastor Cynthia Franklin, Minister Leah Shaw, Pastor Lydia Ford. I'm here, I'm here. Hope Danley, Amber Keys, and hello to you, my dear. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Elsie White, hello. Azim, hello. Good people. Look at all the beautiful people. Nine o'clock is our hour, huh? Kids all settled or the homework is done or our, our job work is done. Someone else is going over to Facebook too. Rosalind Grant, I'm going to say hello to a few more people before we get started. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Cassandra Walker joined. Welcome. Welcome to our Soul Detox for 30 Days. Reverend Tammy Leonard, God bless you. ADT, Gwen Molden, John Booker. Katrina switched as well. Y'all giving up on Periscope, huh? Rosa Rivera, good to see you back, sister. Notebook ready, Reverend Trish. And Corendus, God bless you. Bernard was happy to see that you were on, and I told him about your women's conference coming up. We'll give a shout out to that before these 30 days are over as well. And hello, Hope. Jackie Harden, did you make it to Florida? Good evening, Andrea Allen. Checking in with you too, Gwen. Romanita Gonzalez, hello there. Cassandra Walker. We'll go back and forth just for a few more minutes. Here, they're all checking in here. I was waiting all day for this. All right, Angelise Torres. God bless you. Y'all such an encouragement. I see you, Ebony. You're probably getting kicked out. I hear last night they had some problems with Facebook freezing and kicking out. So people kind of slid over. I mean, on Periscope, they're sliding over to Facebook just to get rid of the drama. We do not need to be... Um, getting online and then dealing with something that's freezing. So if you're having trouble on Periscope, you can catch it on Facebook Live. Um, I believe with Periscope, the videos will stay up and the videos that you rewatch the next day or, you know, once the recording is done, they do not show any freezing at all. They show perfectly. You were rushing out of work for this, Andrea. <laughs> God bless y'all. Y'all blessed my soul. 
Just got to Florida, Jackie. Very good. God is good to y'all with that long drive. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited because y'all excited. You put pressure on me because I had a busy day. I had a full day, you know, before I felt like I wanted to share this journey and, and have others join this journey with me. You know, I still have my regular schedule. God bless you, Lisa Clayton. And, um, you're freezing a little bit, Trish. Good. Go to the laptop. Hello, John Booker. Uh, Minister Cherie Barnes, Mike Rose. Um, you know, I had a regular full schedule for the month and they're still packing things in on me. So I had a full day today and I actually had to skip out on one appointment, which is one of the most important appointments was my hair appointment. <laughs> and, um, just to keep up with everything here today, I want to welcome, I see Pat uh, Patricia has joined us on Periscope. Amen. You're spreading the word. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw someone else on here. They said was a first time listener on Periscope. Um, welcome to you as well. I couldn't see what your name was, um, but I already said Patricia. Ah, Nia McLendon. I think I know you. Do I know you, Nia McLendon? Say something to me. Let me know if I know you. Have I met you in person? Have you been to our ministry before? And um, it's like a few of you are coming on. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, Nicole from Chicago with the baby in her womb. Did you speak to that baby last night? And did you speak all over again? Another day? Lay hands on that belly while we're getting in here. We're jumping in. Yes, exactly. Nicole Coleman's family. I remember you and your beautiful face. And Nicole just jumped on and said, it's Ava's mom. So see, that's how we know you, Nia, as Ava's mom. How are you feeling, Nicole? Amen. I see Aaron Cottrell jumped in. Bless you, Aaron. A very blessed young man. Okay, so I know who that is. And Cynthia... All right, we're going to get started and we're going to get started and talk uh, just for a few minutes while we're letting everyone get in, uh, Sister Yolanda Dawson. Let's just talk for a few minutes, if we can, about last night. Did you sleep on it? Did you um, think about it today? Was there any particular um, line that stuck out in what we talked about yesterday? Any of the stories? Did they bring any revelation to you today? Did they make any clearer sense to you today? Sometimes we hear things and we're like, oh, that's a nice story. Or we may hear something and say, um, oh, that's good. That makes sense. Or we think it uh, impacts us one way. And then the next day after we had a chance to sleep on it, we realize, wow, this is what this meant for me. It triggered something from your soul. Is there anyone that wants to share a comment with me? Okay. I see one came up. What you don't know will hurt you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What you don't know will hurt you. That was a good one. That was a good one for me as well, which means um, ignorance isn't as bliss as they told us it would be. Right. And if you don't mind, if you can um, go ahead and share it, I don't think I have to tell anyone because it looked like there was about 49 shares last night altogether. So I don't think I need to tell you to share it. But if you feel led of God that you know that there's some people that may want to watch this or that you just feel the anointing and you want to get this out to other people, go ahead and share it to your viewers. Um, God will get all the glory for it either way. I'm um, being led differently in my life. I have been a believer I came through some struggles. That's not why I'm a believer. I'm a believer because he's made himself real to me. But the way I'm being led um, by the Holy Spirit is to not minister to just the church anymore, that it's, it's time to come out of the church and minister to those who are outside the church. So I'm, I'm learning um, a new language. Yes, being desensitized, Pastor D. That's very good, that we have become desensitized to our environment. So, um, you know, I, I'm, you're not going to hear the Jesus and the hallelujahs too much out of me. And not that um, I'm being a hypocrite or being fake about it, but... You know, we've learned recently that that's really the home language. That's the house language. That's the language of our kingdom. And there's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm not embarrassed of it or ashamed of it. it has nothing to do with that. But sometime in order to reach people, you have to adapt to their languages, but not their culture. 
I will never change my culture. I represent the culture of the king. But I wasn't always a believer. And if people had always spoke to me in all these different languages of the church, they wouldn't have reached me either. And I share that to say, um, I, there's a comment here, unhealthy. So I'm sorry, I missed it. Someone else said, um, coming outside the church is what the church needs. Exactly looking forward to discovering the root of some of these issues. Someone's saying that this teaching is going to be a major price into being made whole. Yes, there we go. What I ignore today will affect my tomorrow. Ebony said unhealthy thoughts lead to unhealthy words. We're going to wrap that up tonight. Lethal language and toxic emotions. That is it. Adapt to their language and not their culture. You better come on, young man. That's what we do. I want to make sense to you. So I don't have to bring the language of the house to you. I need to make sense to you. So I need to talk. If you're a scientist, let's talk about science because there's nowhere you can go that you can't find the truth of his word and the revelation of his word. So um, I like what you're sharing. Um, we all said that we were going to be the detox delegates. So y'all my detox delegates tonight. Welcome. I'm glad you're on with me. We talked last night about being raised in an unhealthy house, and we gave the example of one um, particular gentleman who was raised in a house of smokers and that he had been breathing secondhand smoke for most of his life. Uh, welcome, Reverend Charles Craig. Good to see you. Go into all the world. That's right. And um, thank you, Marissa. And um, that he didn't realize that there was anything wrong with being in, a, in a, a full smoked area, even though he did not smoke. He didn't know anything was wrong with smoking. And thirdly, he had no uh, idea that breathing the secondhand smoke was absolutely more dangerous to him than it was for those that were actually smoking the cigarettes. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Beverly Ann Hammer. And um, he found this out when he got older and got into the world. So... Um, I'm getting a message for y'all Periscope people, so I hope I'm not freezing on you. Um, so what he considered, what he knew, what he had grown up in that appeared to be normal to him really wasn't normal after all. But he didn't find this till he got out into the world and was able to experience the world more to realize that he was not uh, so normal and actually had become embarrassed because when he got into school, his clothes, it's not freezing, good. His clothes were always smelling like smoke and people was bringing to his attention, you know, this is um, this is not cool, you smelling like this all the time. Hello, Marcus Matthews from Florida. I see some states being represented in here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Time to find a new normal. Girl, I'm with you. So I want you to to think on that for a moment because that was one of my major thoughts today. I didn't, I wasn't raised in a house of smokers, so I didn't have to adjust to um, coming from an environment where everybody smoked and thinking that it was normal to go on out to realize, and not that it was abnormal, but it wasn't the norm for everyone. Um, and it was, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't, it was intoxicating. What environment did you grow up in that had affected you in some way of your life now that you're struggling with? Something that uh, maybe your family still does it. Maybe it's something that your culture does. You know, one of the big things that, that sticks in my mind, how we used to have this saying, what goes on in the house stays in the house. What goes on in our families stay within our families. Now that's good because that's honor and that's respecting our family and that's keeping matters of the house in the house. That's good, 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 good. I totally agree with that. However, when it becomes a problem, when it actually becomes an abuse is when there are things going in the house that is not healthy for those in the house and they can't talk about it to anyone because we're groomed from little children that, um, what is it? You can't speak until you're being spoken of. You know, you don't speak unless an adult addresses you. Um, you know, those type of things. And you just have to keep it in the house. So you can't talk to anyone about it. So abusive have gone on for years. Pedophiles in our families that we don't even like to call them out for what they are, but they're pedophiles. It's very detrimental family secrets. And then we, we, we suffer this. We can't tell anyone. The school is telling us. 
um, our parents that things are going on with our learning. Um, they're daydreaming. They started labeling ADD and then we started rejecting ADD. But ADD is in fact real. It is real. I know we don't like it, but it is real. But it comes from some type of trauma that had happened in our lives. And I believe it started with this, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And the only way we should have to live to that model of what goes on in this house stays in this house is if I'm going to be heard and protected and the matters will be, it will be judged correctly because I need to tell you about uncle so-and-so. I need to tell you about auntie so-and-so bless you, Steve Capers. I need to be able to tell you what's going on in this house. And I can't tell you because, um, you know, I've heard things such as I couldn't tell my mom as a guy that my uncle was raping me because it would cause a family fight and our families were such fighters. They would have killed him. Um, forgive me if you want to edit this off Facebook and Periscope for me. Um, and what could be so wrong with that? Again, edit me. I'm sorry. But if you have the responsibility of raising a child and you're not protecting that child and you'd rather protect the predator. I don't know why I'm going here so hard tonight, but you rather protect the predator or the family name, or you rather protect the family from, from, from getting rid of this pedophile. It's a pedophile. I don't care if it's your uncle. I don't care if it's your auntie, your daddy, your grandfather, your grandma, your babysitter, your school teacher, you deserve to be protected. Not that pedophile. It's a pedophile. And we never like to label it like that, especially in our culture. It's a family thing. And, you know, I've, I've, I've counseled a lot of people and I have never realized until I started counseling how many men, young men, how many boys actually fear. You're right. How many boys were actually molested in their families? And it began to break my heart because when women get older, most of them, not all, they find a place to talk about it. They find people to talk about it to. They meet girlfriends and they share it and they meet um uh, social workers or they join churches and they become part of a group where they're able to talk about these things. But I found out that the men are not able to put a voice on it because automatically they're labeled as something is wrong with them or they're queer or they're gay. You know, the things that we were raised up in that everything was so wrong and so evil. If something happened to you, basically you're not the victim. You caused the problem. Something you did caused this auntie, uncle, babysitter, teacher, grandfather, daddy, mommy, whoever it is, to be sick in their mind, to hurt you. They are supposed to be our first role models. They were the first impressions of a man or a woman or security or parental shepherding over our lives. And when they have not done it, they have failed. And there needs to be, I don't care how old you are, there needs to be some type of family counseling where you can put a voice to these uns in these unseen feelings and these unheard thoughts so that you can get a voice to this thing and you can get delivered from this thing. No way should you be 30, 40, 50, 60. Some have even died without ever putting a voice to this pain, to this hurt. To They were robbed. Innocence was stolen and you were supposed to be protected. Your parents were supposed to protect you from this. Someone was supposed to protect you from this and they failed. And it's okay. We can fix it. We can get back on track again to some degree. But what makes the whole matter worse is when, welcome Kelly, when we can never put a voice to it because it would split the family up. It would divide the church. It would cause this problem or that problem. It needs to put a voice on it. It does not belong on Facebook. You should never come and defame anyone on Facebook. You're a demon if you like to do that. If that makes you feel good, it's something definitely wrong with your soul. And you need to be in here with us for 60 days. Because there should be getting no glory out of making someone else feel bad. Because you know how it hurts to feel bad. What you need to do is get someone to come over and to sit with the family and have a private family matter because mom, dad, auntie, grandma, uncle, whoever you are, I obeyed the rules when I was a child. When I was a child, I obeyed the rules and I kept the family business in the house, but now I am grown. Some things have happened. I need to put a voice to this. I need to get this up out of myself. Some of it you won't even be able to remember, but you know something's wrong. You remember a night. You remember a movie, certain holidays trigger, trigger you, certain sounds, certain smells trigger you. You know something happened, but you can't figure out what it is because your subconscious buried it so deeply so that you wouldn't crack, so that you could survive what happened to you. And you know what? It's time to talk about it privately. 
privately. Go and talk about it with someone. Go get some help. Get this stuff out of you because this stuff is all part of what's in your soul. I don't care if you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak in the tongues of angels. Your, so, your, your spirit may be holy and it may be a part of your body, but if your soul is still messed up and jacked up, how far do you think you're going to get on that? You may make it to heaven. But I believe the word that I stand on says not only am I promised life, but I'm promised abundant life right here on this earth. And I want my inheritance. I need someone on here to say that with me. I want my inheritance. Everything that I have been promised. I want my inheritance. Everything that belongs to me, what belongs to my family name, what, what comes through my generations. I'm tired of hearing about generational curses and word curses. I want some word blessings. I want some generational blessings. I want my inheritance. I'm promised something. I'm reborn. I now have the DNA of my spiritual father. We are kings and priests. We are royalty. And I rebuke every lie and every word that was sown to you. And every time you did try to speak to someone and they wouldn't hear you, I come against all of that that has caused your soul to be polluted and intoxicated where even as a grown woman or a grown man, you can't even put a voice. You can't even speak up in your house. You can't even take authority in your marriage because someone took your voice long ago and now your soul is so messed up, you have no hope. And we know what the word of God says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So some of us have sick hearts and it's not because of the relationship that just ended. It's not because you didn't get the job that you wanted to get. It's not because the kids are acting up. It's not because you thought you was going to be a supermodel and now you're trying to figure out if you want to do Weight Watchers or Jenny Cray. It's not based on any of those things. Your heart is hurt because your hope has been deferred. Who stole your hope? Because we're going to get it back. I said last night, we're going to walk through doors and I believe 18 doors are going to open up and I'm going to figure out the name for each of those doors. I will be in prayer for these 30 days. We're going to find out what are these doors that are going to be opened up and we're going to kick down walls because it is time to get free. If you want to be free, just say it. it. It's time to be free. You promised me, almost everyone on here tonight promised me that you would give me 30 days. And I said, I was going to challenge you, that I was going to push you. I was going to be like that trainer in the gym. I was going to add weight on to your muscle. And when your muscles is shaking and you feel like you can't take anymore and you want to get off this Facebook live and you want to get off this periscope. And when you do close it, you'll be convicted and you'll get back on here to us. Why? Because you know, you need this. You know, you are unhealthy. You know that you have a great job, but your soul is, is toxic. You know that you have great friends, but your soul is toxic. You know that your marriage may be wonderful, but your soul is toxic. You're advancing. You're getting promotion. You're getting increases on your job. You may sing in the front line of your church. You may be even a preacher in the pulpit, but your soul is toxic. And trust me, those things in your soul are going to haunt you and they're going to come for you until they can take you out. They want to sabotage your life. They want to steal your destiny. And we already confirmed last night that each and every one of us has an appointment somewhere down the road. And I need you to agree with me on last night that we were going to make our appointment on time. And we weren't going to sabotage it and blame no devils. Welcome, Sahir. Yes, Sister Gilda. It's time to be free, Pastor D. Lakeisha says she want to be free. Thank you, Apostle Thelma. We have to talk about these things. And that's why, you know, I'm going to go there for a minute. That's why sometimes I get upset at everybody wanting to be a pastor. Because to lead a, 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 a sheep, to lead a flock of, of, of beautiful people, to lead people into a place of, of discipleship or sons and daughters or just some sort of maturity in their life. Pastoring has nothing to do with preaching in the pulpit. Pastoring has as much to do with preaching in the pulpit as prophesying has to do with being a prophet. It's assumed. It's a perfection. It's a perception. It's something that we've always seen, something that's always been accepted, things that we ignored in the church. But you don't even need to be able to preach to be a pastor. The majority of the job with pastoring is counseling. Counseling. You need to have a spirit of counsel to pastor. If you can preach, go be an evangelist. Go preach, baby, preach. I love preaching. I love charismatic preachers. I love people who have a word and can preach. But that does not qualify you to be a pastor. When is the last time someone has been allowed to sit in your office without you being distracted or, 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 or side barred by something else because your body was in that room with them, but your mind wasn't? 
They need the deliverance that is on your life. If you're going to be a pastor, take people through deliverance. Take people through counsel. Have a deliverance ministry set up in your church. But just because you can preach men or women to God doesn't qualify you to be a pastor. A pastor is a very special person. They're like a social worker. They're like a nurse or a doctor. They take the time with you. They're not the anesthesiologist that come and numb you up and walk out the room. That's not the job of the pastor. And I've been doing it for 10 years and I spend more time in counseling than I do in that pulpit. And the work that I do that lasts in people comes from them sitting in my chairs, not the chairs in the sanctuary. I know it. I know it. I know it. Numbers may start going down. Welcome, Joseph Waller. Hey, Elijah. They may start going down. But, you know, we were taught wrong. I was taught wrong. And for the first few years, I taught what I taught. Just like in our families, we raise our children under what we were taught or a lack thereof. So we keep the pattern going and we think that it's okay. It is not okay. Something inside of you needs to tell you it's time to wake up. Something in you is already telling you this isn't right. This doesn't make any sense. Something stole my childhood. Something stole my marriage. Something something stole my ability to properly and have a, 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 a maternal or paternal instinct to raise my children. And I'm not going to let it happen again. Why? Because we keep patterns going. And just because it's a pattern doesn't mean it's a good pattern. So everybody who's on here and you want a pastor, you make sure that you can take the time to counsel people. Because preaching in the pulpit, I don't care if you can do splits and get back up again. I don't care if you could drop the mic and pull it back up again. I don't care if you can do a James Brown move. Baby, if you have nothing else to offer the people after you get out that pulpit, you are in trouble. And worse than that, so are the people. We have to begin to be helpers one to another. I don't know why I got off that way. I don't want to be on that way. It's not on any of my notes. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I did what I needed to do. I don't want to be on here all night. I want, to, I want to set the table. I want us to eat a good meal and I want us to get off so we'll come back again. I don't want to overstay my visit. I don't want to be at your table and, and make you feel that I'm, I'm just taking so much time babbling. But that came up from a deep place. And I believe it came up because that is an issue that we are not dealing with in the house. Since we're talking about keeping what goes on in the house in the house. Yes, apostle, back me up. Yes, Pastor D. Just because a pat, it's a pattern doesn't mean it's a good pattern. So I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I'll look for your inboxes. I'll reply to all of them. I can't guarantee how quickly, but I will re reply to all of them because this matter of the house has caused a lot of us to be uh, engaged and now have become endangered species by the things that we have had to engage, endure. How about that for a better word? So let's, let's get on track with some things. Let's be responsible and let's say this wasn't right. This was not right not right. This was done to me and it's not right. And, and we have a right to tell those who are supposed to protect us and, and raise us functioning, raise us so that we can be functioning adults. We have a right to tell them, you let me down because you didn't protect me. I've had to take this word before and I've even had to take it in ministry before. It's a learning process. But thank God that someone was able to come back to me and I was able to correct a matter. What do you do when the people are no longer there and now you don't even want to go for counseling or deliverance? Because we, especially our culture, we are taught not to go to psychologists and psychiatrists when we have a whole nother sect of people who go for um, they have um, they have a breakup in their relationship and it's going right into their psychologist's office. You know, um, one of their children um, gets in a, a horrible car accident and the trauma is just to, they go and they go get their counseling. But we as a people, we don't go in and get counseling. And that's a dangerous place to be. I found out a lot in the last couple of years about PTSD. And we think that it's only a military thing. It's not a military thing. It comes from stress, traumatic stress. And what's traumatic on your life may not be the same as what's traumatic on my life. But just because I broke from something that you survived from doesn't make me a wimp or any less than anybody else. It was traumatic enough to me. So now we have all this gun violence. We have all this drug addiction, all these deaths in our streets and people, these young children coming up are suffering from PTSD and who's counseling them. Who's who's counseling them. These are real facts that are going on that we cannot keep ignoring. 
So these are things that affect our soul. And that's why I'm going in like this, because I need us to be better at living. I need us to be better at attaining assignments. Stop sabotaging relationships. Stop sabotaging assignments. Go in that office and get that promotion because our soul is ready and we can see maturity in you that we couldn't see in you 90 days ago or, or, or even better yet, after these 30 days, your job is going to see a whole different person in you. Why? Because in 30 days, if you allow me and the Holy Spirit to do this work in you and all I'm doing is talking, he's doing the work. Just take the time out and pay some attention to yourself. Stop ignoring what's been going on for too long and surrender yourself to the self-examination that we're working on for these 30 days. We need to be better at living. Yes, we do. We're preparing to die. Oh, how great heaven is going to be. Well, how great is earth? The Lord made the heaven so wonderful that we shouldn't want to live here. No, he made the earth full and wonderful and he owns everything on it. So we have to start enjoying it, but we cannot enjoy life when our soul is toxic. Thank you, Cheryl Johnson. Thank you, Steve Capers, Cassandra Walker, Apostle Thelman. I see all these hearts going across. I love you all so much for this. I'm going to be so in love with y'all in 30 days. I don't know what I'm going to come up with after this. Welcome, Destiny. So what I want, look, well, let me do what I'm, what I need to do right. First of all, even for those, and I pray there are people on here that are not believers and not Christians, but I pray that you're on here because you just want to know about this detoxing of our minds, detoxing of our heart. That's our soul. So father, we come to you tonight. We come to you in the power and the volume of the book. We lift up every issue, every matter, even those, Father, that we cannot see, but you know and you see them all. We lift them up to you tonight, and we ask you to investigate us, to bring in the Holy Spirit, even through this live Facebook and Periscope, bring in the counselor side of you tonight. Anoint us, Father, so that we can really go through this process and give you the, the abundance of what's inside of us that is not working for us, that's not working for our good, that you may take over and not just become Lord and Savior, but God, you can become king and the dominator over the dominion of this earth that you've given us. Father, each person on here tonight is special to you. No matter who never told them, no matter who rejected them, how they remain misunderstood. Every person on this scope and who will see it after this is important to you. So I pray tonight that as we recommit to these 30 days that you will continue to do the work in us. We will totally give of ourselves in our time with you, in our dreams, in our sleep, in our getting up and in our going down. We bless you for it because we believe you heard this. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, Beverly Ann. Bless you, Carmen Santiago. Welcome, welcome. So tonight, our second topic for tonight on day two, we're talking about deception, infection. Deception, infection. To be deceived is an infection. And even worse, to deceive yourself is an infection. And it's an infection in our soul. Yes, yes, I'm reading your comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep talking to me. Let me see what you're saying. Absolutely. So we spend so much time on detoxes. The GNC store has all these cleansers, these colon cleansers, and people go to psychiatrists and psychologists, and they're trying to detox all that's on their plate, all that's on. And um, why would we ever think that we don't need to detox our soul? Why would we think that if the body needs to be cleansed, so wouldn't the soul needs to be cleansed? The soul takes in as much or probably even more than what the actual um, colon would have to take in. And that still needs to be cleansed. Isn't that amazing? But we cleanse the body, the thing that's perishable, but the soul that we have to live on earth all these days, we don't take any time to cleanse. This um, periscope is shutting my phone down. So if y'all just give me... 10 seconds, I'll be back just to make sure I can keep it on the charge.
All right. Station break. Switch sides here. Thank you, Lord. How y'all doing? We all right? I got a little wound up there. Deception infection. Day two. So we're talking about cleansing our body, in particular our colon. So now we're going to go through a soul detox. And that's basically how you want to break it down if you need to explain it to, to someone else. That's what I want to say tonight. Are we ready? Someone told you somewhere along life that your thoughts don't matter. That was a bad thing to teach us. Then some told us as long as you keep them inside and they don't hurt anybody, they don't matter. They're fine. But that right there, as Rosalind Stevens just said, is deception infection. When you think that your thoughts don't matter, you are already deceiving yourself because unhealthy thoughts become unhealthy words. Unhealthy thoughts become unhealthy words. These were two notes that I asked us to make last night. So your thoughts do matter. Even the thoughts that you keep inside, they do matter. And even more so, silent thoughts actually poison your soul. And we're going to deal with that word. That's a strong word, poison. I looked all this up today. It's good stuff that, that, that I'm, I'm getting to, to apply to my next 30 days. So I can really take authority over 2017. Silent thoughts actually poison your soul. Because sometimes what you get out, you can forget. But what you keep in... Keep circulating and circulating and circulating and circulating until sometimes you just want to just grab your head and say, I'm going crazy. I can't get this thought out of my head because you have to put a voice to it. You have to share it with an advisor or a counselor or a shepherd in your life, a, a, a mature friend. Get someone who has some good information, revelation, some great teaching. And believe me, they people, let me change this too, because this is a thought that we keep repeating that sometimes we repeat stuff that we have heard and we haven't even checked out to, it, to see if it even makes sense. I do not have to have gone through your problem to give you good counsel about it. Mike, drop, drop the mic. Why do I have to have been on drugs in order to tell you the damage of drugs? Do you think the doctor has had a heart attack? Do you think that the doctor suffers from high blood pressure before they treat you for that heart attack or that high blood pressure? Absolutely not. They've studied it. They've researched it. They've practiced it that they're able to tell you about it. So stop throwing away good people and good advice just because they have not gone through what you have gone through does not mean or disqualifying them from for being able to counsel you. You know, I, I stick with the Bible and I, I, I hope it doesn't offend you because I don't want to offend you. I want you to stay on even when I talk about my faith. But when I read about Apostle Paul who wrote the book on the church, who wrote the book on, on Christian marriages, he wasn't even married, but he gives us the most counsel on marriages. Stop thinking that just because someone hasn't gone through what you've gone through, that they can't give you advice on it. The devil is a liar. No, you should not listen to your running around single friends who don't stay committed in relationships to give you marital advice. No, you should listen to them, but it does not matter. They can't tell you when you're wrong because a lot of good friends of mine can tell me when I'm wrong and they've never walked in a situation with me like that. So don't throw everybody away just because you haven't walked through what I've gone through. You can't tell me nothing. That's not always true. Now, people, can, people can't judge you if they haven't walked through it because you have nothing to compare it to. But it does not mean that someone has not studied something so in-depth and actually has become an expert in something that I can advise you on something that I've never gone through. People come to my office all the time with situations that I have never gone through in my life. And I can advise them because I advise them through the practice. I advise them through the study. I take time to study it. You Remember that. Doctors don't have to suffer what you suffer in order to bring you healing with it. They've studied it. They practice it. And they got a degree in it. So I don't want to stay on that. But I want us to stop throwing away people in our lives that we think can't speak into our lives because they just don't have it, whatever it is. Stop doing that. 
So these silent thoughts that are going on in our mind, they're not good and they're poison. Unfortunately, our thoughts don't just stay in our mind. They don't stay disconnected from our words or our actions. Silent thoughts, the ones that we even keep inside, they, they do not just stay in our head. Don't fool yourself and think that these thoughts stay in your head. Welcome, Chris Blake. And do not think that your thoughts are disconnected from your words. I will even go a step further. Do not think that your thoughts are disconnected from your moods. M-O-O-D-S. Do not think that. These silent thoughts is what's causing your mood swings right now. You could have been had a happy day today had you sat down and talked to someone about this situation. But instead, you keep it inside and you're having silent talks with yourself. You know, all these ghosts that live on the inside of you and you're having all these talks with them. And then they start answering you back. And now you got the judge, the jury, and, and the prosecutor. And you're all of them. And how are you going to get a right answer for that? That makes no sense at all. Those, stop thinking that those silent thoughts, that they just go away, that they're disconnected from your words and your actions. They affect you more. Than